Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, we're going to talk uh, a lot of things, including is Ryan Merkley's time in San Jose almost done? Plus, the Sharks get stomped 6-2. to two. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin and San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, you can watch this on YouTube as well. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see a little bit different uh, setup tonight as I am actually recording in my hallway. We have family over, so all the bedrooms and everything is kind of taken over. So I'm in the hallway uh, recording here. It's a little bit different setup tonight. I kind of like it though, but, um, sharks lost six to two, but we're going to put that on the back burner. Um, I know this is a locked on sharks podcast, but we're going to put that in these kind of talk about that in the middle and the end of this podcast. Um, I want to just talk about the Barracuda and specifically Ryan Merkley. Um, I went to the Barracuda game tonight. Barracuda lost five to one, um, very much, what we've seen recently from the Sharks, but Ryan Merkley, once prized first round pick of the Sharks, the the kind of the crown jewel of the Sharks prospect pool until the past couple of years, I'd say, I'd say even until William Eklund was drafted, you could still point to Ryan Merkley as kind of being the, the best prospect in the Sharks prospect pool until Eklund arrived on the scene. And now has clearly, kind of tumbled down and um, tonight was benched by coach John McCarthy um, in the second period. Didn't play basically didn't play shifts in the second period and a third period. And you have to wonder if his time in San Jose is going to be coming to an end. So um, let's kind of go back, rewind a little bit, look at the Merkley timeline, right? Bounced around, you know, was drafted, fell in the first round because of, potential attitude issues Uh, was traded three times in his juniors career, right? Um, Gulf storm, Petersburg Pete's, and then um, the uh, London Knights, right? Comes to San Jose in his 2020 year, um, the 2020 season COVID year. I've talked about this before where didn't, you know, weird year willing to throw that year away. Right. The following season gets to play kind of starts really well in the AHL gets called up with the Sharkuda uh, team, you know, when, when COVID and then things, you know, got to play a little bit there, scored his first goal, but then got sent down and then kind of played the yo-yo game uh, of being with the Sharks or the Barracuda. And then when he was at the Sharks, he was getting benched a lot, you know, et cetera, et cetera. This season, right? Does he need, doesn't even get to go to Europe straight to the AHL, which is fine. Okay. Fresh start. We want to work on Merkley's development, et cetera, et cetera. You know, especially with the, this, he hasn't really had a full opportunity to just kind of develop, right? He's either been 2020 season. Again, I'm going to, I'm willing to throw that season out, especially with, Weird year, the weird practicing, all right. The Barracuda having to start the season, you know, the first two months in Arizona. Willing to throw that season out, fine. Last year, again, we're kind of bouncing around, seemed to fall, fall out of favor with Bob Bugner, uh, especially with, you know, Bob Bugner, how he likes his defenseman to play. We've seen. Other offensive defensemen, a.k.a. Eric Carlson, who's, again, Eric Carlson is one of the generational talents. A um, little hard to compare, but still, we've seen him 
we've seen many of the defensemen kind of flourish or have better seasons, right? Carlson's having a renaissance season. You know, I think Shimmick's played a lot better this season. Even like Vlasic's played much better. We've seen some of the other defensemen have better seasons. So, but again, Merkley, it, it seems like he is frustrated with his development and I'm sure the Sharks are kind of frustrated with it too. And maybe with his attitude, we know Merkley's had some attitude issues before. Um, and it seems like tonight it kind of all came together. Um, Mike, uh, general manager, Michael, uh, Chris, Mike Greer, sorry, too many Greer's in my life. Um, general manager, Mike Greer didn't go with the Sharks to Santa. He stayed in San Jose to watch the Barracuda game. So, if your boss is there, right? Mike Greer, kind of the boss of everybody. Um, if he is there and you play piss poor defense, like Ryan Mer again, Ryan Merkley is not known for his defense. That is not why you drafted Ryan Merkley, but you have to at least try. If you're trying on defense and then you are bringing the offense, fine. That is his role. That is Ryan Merkley. Ryan Merkley is never going to be a shutdown defenseman, but if he tries hard on defense and then he brings a bunch of offense, that is why you drafted him. If you play piss poor defense, excuse my language. I don't know if that's a bad word. Or not. Anyway, if you play terrible defense and then you're not doing anything in the offensive zone, that's what gets you benched. And John McCarthy has every right to do that. And I think McCarthy sent a message to Ryan Merkley. There was a very, uh, Josh, uh, Froilin, um, covers works San Jose hockey. Now also feel the fin great quote from, he got from John McCarthy. Merkley wasn't playing well. Oh, let me get the exact quote, but, uh, basically was, um, Merkley not buying in, which is one of the worst things you can hear from a coach, right? If you are not buying into the system, all right, let me get the uh, exact quote here. Josh Froilin, um, when was Merkley's benching primarily from the second goal, McCarthy, a little bit about buy-in, didn't think he was going. That's, I think that is the most damning thing, right? You make a mistake, fine. You play bad defense, fine. But if you are not, buying in especially on this team this barracuda team that is struggling to find itself and you've had a bunch of injuries on the defensive front and you have a lot of young guys contributing but you know it's you know how it is with young players it's there's gonna be valleys and there's gonna be highs and you know some maybe some guys are plateauing some guys just sort of fit. but not buying especially ryan merkley you were supposed to be you've been there the longest right what other guy on the Barracuda can you point to and be like that, you know, Jeff Reveal? Like, again, they have done a basically a clean sweep of this organization. And Ryan Merkley's the guy who's been there the longest. You are supposed to be setting a tone for this team. And he made a statement to my brother the way he played and doing that in front of your boss. And I, I, I can tell you 100% he is not happy in San Jose. He doesn't feel the way he's been treated. That's fine. But you play like that in front of the boss, my guru. I think your time is done. Ryan Merkley is going to be traded this season. Traded. They probably won't get much for him. If you are if you get a fifth-round pick from Ryan Merkley, he's probably going to be a contract added in. It is time for a – it is time for – a divorce between the Sharks and Brian Merkley. Um, it's unfortunate when you have to give up on a first round pick, but I just don't think Ryan Merkley is going to be the type of player they think they drafted. Um, now I think there's just, I, I, I don't think that the sides can come together. Merkley is frustrated with his role, et cetera, et cetera. Again, who went to Europe? Nick Chichek, who was the first defenseman called up uh, when Ferraro was hurt. Nick Chichek, he's being passed by other defensemen on in the organization. And 
I think he's frustrated with it and he has every right to be frustrated with it. But at some point you got to look at yourself in the mirror. And I think Ryan Merkley's time in San Jose is going to be coming to an end. So um, before we continue and actually get into the Sharks uh, six to two loss and why Timo Meyer continues to be awesome. Um, let's take a quick break. Talk to you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. You guys know Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. We've got the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. You have pro football, college football, or you have bowl season right now, which is the best. The best. You've got the big games coming up here this weekend. Um, basketball, you have uh, college basketball, you have world juniors going on. They've got you all covered at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, what you do because you're listening to one right now, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Okay. Um, so again, I listened to this game. It was in, I love listening to Dan Ruzanowski. Dan Ruzanowski is the best. Love this. So listen to Dan Ruzanowski call the game. Um, got to, you know, watch a couple highlights and so, it's all that fun stuff. But um, Sharks lose six to two uh, to the Vancouver Canucks. Timo Meyer scores both the goals. Eric Carlson, primary assist on both goals. And that's just been the formula for the Sharks, right? Timo Meyer being awesome, Eric Carlson being awesome. And that's basically their offense. Um, I did some really rough math in the car ride home. Um, so, Timo Meyer, 20 goals so far this season. Awesome. Love it. As you remember, Timo Meyer didn't score his first goal until game 10. So, this is game 36. He didn't score his first goal to game 10. So, if you take that 27 game pace, 27 game sample size, throughout the first 10 games, Timo Meyer didn't, you know, wasn't scoring. Uh, the last 27 games, including tonight's game, uh, Timo Meyer has scored 0.74 goals per game. He's almost at a goal per game. <laughs> so, uh, three fourths of a goal per game over 27 games. If you extrapolate that over a full season, okay, not just. A full season of 0.74 times 82. That's what I'm at 60.68. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, 61 goals. That's pretty good. Um, even the, you know, you take out the 10 games, right? First 10 games. Um, 53. So Timo Meyer right now is on a pace to score 53 goals this season. If you can't go from the pace since game 10 on, the pace Timo Meyer is at, he's going to score 53 goals. He's already at 20, and we're not even halfway to the season. Timo Meyer is really good. Sharks should keep him. Um, we'll dig into that next week. But, you know, Eric Carlson is up to 48 points, and we're not even at the halfway season point of the season. Like, this is ridiculous what Eric Carlson is doing doing right now i'm trying to be positive about the sharks before we dig into the train wreck that is the rest of the team right now but um yeah eric carlson has been amazing for the sharks and again so 40 points this season his career high with the sharks was 45 in his first season and that was in 53 games Eric Carlson has 48 points in 36 games for this season. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. He's on he's trending, he's on pace to be a hundred point to score hundred points this year. Um again, it's not like the Sharks are some juggernaut team right now that's just dominating offensively. It's Timo Meyer and Eric Carlson doing all the heavy lifting and Couture and Hurdle chipping in as well. More than chipping in, but these guys are your two best players and they've been playing like it. So, um, yeah, they're really good. You should keep them both. Anyway, that's just me. <laughs> Especially if you had a uh, like top two pick in this draft. 
two guys who can walk into the NHL tomorrow uh, or next who will walk into the NHL next season. And if you add one of those guys and you have Bortolo and Eklund um, playing next year, you can start to see where this is going, where you can go from being a really bad team to being a really fun, frisky team here really quickly. So, um, but yes, we will dive into those conversations another day. Let's look at how the Sharks lined up in this game, and then we'll get into um, how they the lines perform. So, um, weird, funky line signs. So, actually, before we get into that, um, Matt Benning did leave this game. He blocked a shot um, on a penalty kill. Blocked a shot, came back for one shift in the third period, and then was ruled out right away. So, keep an eye on that with Benning. Um, if he is out, of course, Shimmick, who was scratched tonight, will most likely jump back in um, and then keep an eye on the recalls for um, the Barracuda. They're starting to get healthy on the defensive line. But again, I think uh, Nick Chichek is, again, the first man up, um, as we talked about in the first segment. And Chichek's already played some NHL games this year. So I would assume if Benning is going to be out long term, uh, Chichek will be up and then It'll be either him or Harrington healthy scratched, but we will see there. That would be that would be my guess. But anyway, um, all right, we'll dig into the lines first, and we'll get into how they or how they played. So, Barabanov, Couture, Timo Meyer, Matt Nieto, Tomas Hurdle, Kevin LeBanc. Then you have Sveshnikov, Sturm, Nick Benino. You have Lindblom, Lawrence, and uh, Noah Gregor to kind of round things out there. So um, interesting that they didn't give put Hurdle and Meyer right back together um, just because of we know how well that the chemistry is on that line, and especially with LeBanc. Um, but the Couture Bear Banoff Meyer line was amazing tonight, and I have a feeling it's mainly because Timo Meyer is really good. Again, Timo Meyer uh, is, is pretty awesome. So, um, yeah, he <laughs> pulling up his, uh, yeah, <laughs> Timo Meyer had, uh, <laughs> hold on, his individual course. Uh, yeah, Timo Meyer had uh, 0.45. Um, individual uh, expected goals for it was actually second on the team behind Hurdle, who had a couple empty netters that he just missed. Um, but yeah, the the Meyer Bear Banoff Couture line was amazing tonight. So twenty, so they played fifteen oh six time on ice together, which is a lot, a lot of that's that's a lot of five on five time, and the Sharks only. There's only two penalty power plays for the Sharks and the uh, only one penalty kill um, for the Sharks tonight. So a lot of 5 on 5 time. But 15-06, 22 shot attempts, 5 against. Shots for was 11-5. to five. That's really good. That's really good. Um, did have a goal for and gave up a goal. Um, scoring chances, they generated 14 scoring chances tonight. Four high danger chances. Um, and then... A lot of five offensive zone, 10 neutral zone, three defensive zone starts. So uh, but going back to just Timo Meyer, just doing Timo Meyer things. Um, <laughs> Timo Meyer had nine individual uh, <laughs> Corsi fours. Uh, so he had nine shot attempts, um, six scoring chances for himself. Yeah. That's ridiculous. So um, that's all. Just that's sorry. Just five on five. If we go full, um, <laughs> it's seven, seven scoring chances if you count his power play opportunities. So uh, yeah, Timo Mar is a monster, and you should pay him a lot of money to keep playing hockey for you because he's really good. So um, before we continue, look at the rest of the lines um, and how the new look lines perform there. And if we might start to see some more shuffling of the deck chairs on the bottom kind of pairings here, or if we go back to the hurdle Meyer, um, 
do want to let you guys know about the Locked On Sports Today podcast. So thank you guys for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. For your second listen, go check out the Locked On Sports Today. They're the biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less. But it's instant reactions, game recaps, Locked On's take of the day. Um, I'm sure tomorrow it's going to be a lot of Luca uh, when he scores 60 points. And yeah, you're probably going to be the, the main guy. So uh, Locked On Sports Today available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. All right, so digging into the rest of, of the line. So, um, yeah, Bear Band of Couture Meyer, they had themselves a night. Um, Nieto, Hurdle, LeBanc. So I was really – they played the the next um, time on it. So I was really interested to kind of see where the Nick Benino would kind of slide into, right? Um, I thought he would probably get the second-lined role because of how well he's played with them, but it looks like he got slid down to the – uh, third line and Matt Nieto kind of took that spot. So 915 of time on ice, nine uh, shots, four, eight allowed. Um, actual shots was four to four, did give up a goal. Um, two high danger chances for one high danger chance allowed. Um, three scoring chances gave up five, which is not, not very good to see right there. Six offensive sensors, two and two. So, Hurdle would have had a better night if he had scored. Um, you know, did have, a, like I said, had a couple empty net opportunities they just missed. So um, do have a lot of line shuffling here. So we'll kind of go through it and see, especially when you're down trying to generate offense. <coughs> Excuse me. Sveshikov, Sturm, Nick Benino, 457, time on ice, four shot attempts, two allowed. Two actual shots and goal to zero. And then one scoring chance to two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, kind of petered out for that. Loom Blom, uh, Lawrence Sveshnikov, 339, four shot attempts, four, one allowed. Um, and then one, zero actual shots to one. Again, not just not generating a lot of offense there. Loom Blom, Lawrence, Noah Gregor, put 336, one shot attempt, gave up four. Um, shot attempts, two actual shots. And then we also saw a Gregor Sturm, Nick Benino played 325, two shot attempts for give up eight PU, um, and a goal there. And so, yeah, we'll see what they want to do there because, right, Nieto, like Nieto's not going out, but like Gregor Lindblom of both been kind of in the doghouse as of recently. Um, you know, if, if Gadovich is probably going to draw back in at some point when the, the Sharks play the Flyers on Thursday, I would I would expect that Gadovich to draw back in on Thursday when the Sharks play the Flyers. So, and this is a weird game because if you look at like some of the stats and stuff, the Sharks didn't play too poorly, right? Shots on goal, like Corsi attempts, the Sharks had more 56 to 45 um, shots for 24 to 23. This is at five one five scoring chances for was tied 20 to 28, eight high danger chances with 10 to 11 in favor of the Canucks, you know, expected goals for was pretty even 2.48 to 2.27. So again, like it's pretty close, but you know, I don't think Reimer had the greatest night and he played, um, you know, he gave up six goals, and that, that's what happens sometimes. So, he, 25 shots, and you only make 16 or 19 saves. You know, he had 10 high danger uh, shots against at all situations, and he made seven saves there. So, that's three goals, eight mid danger shots. And this is where kind of Reimer has been, been lights out, right? And five saves, gave up three right there. So, there's your, there's your big difference. Um, you know, on, Spencer Martin on the other side of it, right? He, sorry, I pulled up the wrong one. Um, kind of all situations. So he had 24 and 26 saves, six high danger, made five saves, one, uh, gave up one goal. Mid danger, nine mid danger shots, made eight saves, gave up one, and then nine low danger. So Canucks did a little bit better job of getting those high danger uh, shots, kind of a little bit more quality over, over, the quantity, but Spencer Martin made some big saves. Um, and then James Reimer just kind of come up with a save and 
Yeah. Story of the sharks, right? One thing's working well and something else kind of falls apart or you get goaltending one night, but then you can't find offense. And that just continues to be the story of the sharks. So, um, Sharks have some some big games coming up here, especially in the old tank standings. So they're going to be playing the Flyers on Thursday. And then this weekend, they've got the Stars and then the Blackhawks, who are, I think they've been shut out six times, I, I think is what I read, six times this season. Um, so big games here in the old tankathon standings. So we'll get you guys ready for the Flyers game uh, tomorrow. And then, you know, of course, get you guys uh, discuss the Flyers games and uh, probably talk a little bit about uh, the, the the weekend's games ahead as well. So um, make sure you guys are following me on Twitter at my fry hole. I'm also trying to post as many world junior clips as I can uh, by stead looking pretty good, looking pretty good. So um, make sure you're following me on Twitter, following the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at locked on sharks. You can listen wherever you get podcasts, um, Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, Amazon Music, all those places. Watch on YouTube. Please subscribe on YouTube. Really appreciate it. And then until tomorrow or today, because it's already after midnight. Bye, friends.